The president just dropped a bombshell. He's going to strip state governments of their power to regulate AI. That means no more state-level oversight, no more local checks, and all of this is happening when we're about to get hit by 6G. A network designed to connect every device, every camera, every sensor, and even future implants into one system. And while the experts are screaming on top of their lungs about the upcoming threat, the legacy media and the people in power refuse to even acknowledge it. That's exactly why I'm going to expose all of it in this video and tell you what the hell they're doing behind the scenes. And we have to start with something President Trump said a couple of months ago during his visit to the UK. So we're taking the next logical step with a historic agreement on science and technology partnerships, and this will create new government, academic, and private sector cooperation in areas such as AI, which is taking over the world. It's, I mean, I'm looking at you guys. You're taking over the world, Jensen. I don't know what you're doing here. I, I hope you're right. All I can say is we both hope you're right. But uh, it's a pretty amazing. Quantum computing, fusion, 6G, and uh, civil nuclear energy, and align our nations through the approach of centered deregulation and innovation. And we're going to have a lot of deregulation and a tremendous amount of innovation. He was joking around like he always does, but did you notice how he suddenly looked almost nervous while talking to the NVIDIA CEO about their AI plans? What does he know about these grand AI plans that we don't? Now his comments shook a lot of people because he wasn't just talking about AI. He was talking about bringing 6G to the country at a time when members of his own administration were still fighting the rollout of 5G. They are putting in place all of these technical, technological mechanisms for control we've never seen before. It's been the ambition of every totalitarian state from the beginning of mankind to control every aspect of behavior, of conduct, of thought, and to obliterate dissent. Within five years, we're going to see 415,000 low-orbit satellites. Bill Gates says his 65,000 satellites alone will be able to look at every square inch of the planet 24 hours a day. They're putting in 5G to harvest our data and control our behavior. Digital currency that will allow them to punish us from a distance and cut off our food supply. Back then, most people brushed it off. They assumed the president was talking big to attract investment, to boost America's image in the AI race. Just long-term ideas and nothing immediate. But now, those same people are stunned because President Trump is no longer hinting. He's openly saying he'll sign an executive order to stop states from regulating AI. No more independent state laws, just one rule from the federal government. And this this isn't some sudden move either. This administration already tried to do it through the big, beautiful bill. It's a terrible idea for the same reasons it's always been a terrible idea, Steve, which is to give these companies, these mega companies, multinationals, 10 years where they can do whatever the heck they want. And we all know what they're going to do. Here's what they'll do. They're going to come after everything that is yours, your name, your image, your likeness. They're going to take it. Anything you put out on the web, any of your pictures, any of your kids' pictures, your grandkids are going to take them. They're already doing it. And what are you getting compensated for it? Nothing. At that time, 99 out of 100 senators voted against removing state authority. That was also the moment Marjorie Taylor Greene first broke ranks and accused President Trump and his administration of pushing for dangerous federal overreach in AI. I had told uh, the White House I couldn't vote for I couldn't vote for it, there's no way because we get a vote again. Everybody needs to understand that it comes back to the House and we get to vote again. There's no way I can destroy state rights and there's no way I can let AI have free reign and the, the potential destruction that it could have for 10 years without states being able to protect themselves and the people that live there and their jobs and their children. And it was it was too big of an issue um, to, to over to, to get me to a yes on. And I was I'm just I'm just thrilled and 99 to one. That does show you that, that there's some voices in the president's ear 
that are not telling him the truth. As you can see, this isn't a partisan fight. Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, everyone agrees on one thing. Washington cannot be allowed to take away state power over a technology this explosive. But that's exactly what's happening. And what makes all of this even scarier is the timing. They're stripping states of control at the exact moment they're preparing to roll out a full 6G network in this country. And notice how the mainstream media refuses to even talk about what 6G really is. They act like it's just the next upgrade, just faster internet it's not. 6G is being built only for AI, and it's going to be controlled by AI. Now, that's already scary, but let me show you what the CEO of Qualcomm revealed about it. This is where 6G is coming. Every generation of wireless, it's a problem to solve. 2G was about making sure everyone in the world could have a telephone. 3G, connecting the phone to the internet. 4G, giving broadband to a mobile device and turn that into a computer. 5G is to allow all of us to have unlimited data rates and have mission-critical communication. What is 6G? 6G is designed for AI. So in addition of the networks making connectivity and give you faster connections, we'll sense every Thing around you. So basically, 6G waves will be able to track us in real time and all of that information will be fed directly into AI systems, which once again, will take control over every digital device we own. For example, we run experiments. We put our radio into a room and you can have a baby in a crib and just as the baby inhale and exhale and his chest moves, you have a disturbance in the RF environment, and we can actually get the heart rate monitor from the baby in the receiver of the radio. You take the AI to the next level, you can actually get facial recognition of everybody in the room. That's gonna be done at scale at a 6G network, and that's more context. Now, of course, they say this data will be used to understand our behavior and make us more productive. But every expert who's actually paying attention can see where this is going. Don't forget, governments and corporations already influence our lives through algorithms and social engineering. But if they know our every move, every habit, every impulse, their power becomes absolute. Suddenly, we can see why they think elections will be irrelevant. Technology now is, and uh, digital technologies mainly have an analytical power. Now we go into a predictive power, and we have seen the first examples, and your company very much involved into it. But since the next step could be in, to go into a prescriptive uh, mode, which means um, uh, you you do not even have to have elections anymore because you can already uh, predict what uh, predict, and afterwards you can say why do we need elections? Because we know what the result will be. Now here's the wildest part: 6G won't just track people who use AI devices; it will track everyone. These signals don't just stop at your phone or your home. They blanket entire cities. So unless you're completely off the grid and lost in the wilderness, you're inside the system. Doesn't matter if you wanted this or not. And this total visibility is exactly why tech billionaires are convinced AI bots and drones will eliminate crime. There's something going on in a shopping center, and I'll stop. A drone goes out there, I get there way faster than a police car. There's no re reason for, by the way, high-speed chases. You shouldn't have high-speed ch chases between cars. Uh, you just have a drone follow the car. I mean, it's very, very simple. And the new generation, generation of autonomous drones. I think we, may, we might we may be able to give people, if somebody's committed a crime, a more humane form of uh, containment of future crime, which is if if you, if you say, like, you now, get a, you now get a free Optimus, and it's just going to follow you around and stop you from doing crime. But other than that, you get to do anything. Just, it's just going to stop you from committing crime. That's, that's really it. You don't have to put people in, like, prisons and stuff. Uh, it's pretty wild to think of, the, the various, of all the possibilities, but I think it's, 
it's, it's, clear, it's clearly the future. They're building a future where free will becomes questionable, where every decision is watched, measured, and predicted. A world where you won't even feel safe speaking against the government, let alone doing something illegal. And if our states lose their rights to regulate AI and 6G, this world will become a reality whether we like it or not. These mad billionaires will introduce the same insane programs in the US that they're running in the rest of the world. AI will play a role not only in the scientific discovery side, for new vaccines and drugs, but AI will play an incredible role in the delivery as well. Uh, we're funding the AI companies to understand all of the world's languages, uh, including all the dialects of Africa and Asia, so even the poorest will, just with a cell phone, be able to talk and have a virtual doctor, a virtual tutor, a virtual uh, agricultural advisor. In fact, our goal is very simple, that the poorest in the world should benefit first from AI, not be 10 or 20 years behind, uh, which is normally the case. And while we suffer the consequences, they'll be hiding in the bunkers they've been building all over the world. Avoid a crisis. He estimates this could push unemployment to 20% within one to five years. I'd be interested to see if you hmm. think that that's conservative or on point. Um, is this kind of looming disruption why the billionaires are building bunkers? Um, yes, actually, it's one of the reasons. Generally, it's what they do, but I know a lot of AI CEOs now have cancelled all public appearances, especially in the wake of Charlie Kirk and things like that. 